Hello and welcome back to Web Gaming Central. I'm coming to you with another tutorial, and this time this tutorial is really about how to play the game and uh, some of the mechanics of the game and the differences uh, to compare to other MMOs. And um, if this is your first time playing, or you know you're about to consider buying the game and getting into it, uh, this tutorial may be uh, beneficial to you because, uh, like I said, there's some differences. And uh, you first come in, you you know maybe a little bit of a learning curve. But um, once you get used to it, it's very simple and it's very entertaining, in my opinion. So, um, <clears throat> without further ado, just some of the specifics that I wanted to just cover. If you've seen some of my other uh, tutorials and uh, or videos of this game, you might have come across some of these topics I may cover. But I'm not going to go into crafting. Um, I'm going to really just strictly stick to the concept of uh, the mission structures, uh, side quests, side missions, uh, main story overarching mission, if you will, and then, uh, again, just some of the basics of combat, and, uh, you know, just some things that you would like to know, most likely would like to, would want to know coming into the game. So, to start, as I mentioned before in other tutorials, um, there's really no leveling in this game. But for me, I, I, I think that's a little it's very accurate but at the same time there is levels in a sense uh, for example if I decide to go to the next zone now without you know finishing a request or as many as I can in King's mouth then um, I will be severely you know outgunned and outmanned with any mob over there so um, in that respect there are levels but um I'll get into that in a little detail if you look I have it highlighted I'm, my mouse is over the head talisman here and uh, as you can see it's head talisman QL0 QL stands for quality level and uh, as far as I know there's only 10 quality levels in the game so that is pretty much the level. So if you, for example, let's say you're in PvP and you're going against a quality, it, let's say you are a quality level zero like my character here, which is my dragon by the way, I just created him, and you go up against a quality level six, you know, or three for that matter, it will be challenging because that player has stronger gear than you do. And um, if you played any MMO, you understand that whoever has the best gear has a leg up on you. So um, or has the advantage. So, <clears throat> keeping that in mind, you can kind of get an idea of how it works with this game. But as far as level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, there really are no levels uh, in that respect in this game. But, moving on, as I said, there's, uh, I want to kind of go over some of the uh, mission structures and how uh, you advance in the game. Um, let's go through a few things though here on the left hand side of this interface for my character. Uh, as you can see, my character's name is uh, Lin Jasan Yuroko. And I just, you know, hey, I just try to be creative. And uh, <laughs> um, here is my title that I can pick. I can either, either have no title or choose the starting title that they give you. Um, my character statistics, this is, I think I showed this before, but depending on what you want to play, what your role is, either way you will have stats in all three um, so you will see here how effective or ineffective you are as far as offense or just think DPS damage per second um, defensive stats uh, think tank and um, healing stats which is uh, pretty self-explanatory your ability to heal as well as how well your character heals um, so for example if you have if you're playing with a group and you have a healer some of these stats will also affect how well you heal, so how effective that healer can be when it comes to uh, your character. But I don't want to confuse you too much um, or sound crazy. But um, moving on, faction rank. I'm gonna click the wrong button there. Faction rank. Um, a dragon rank one. The ranks really have no relation to your level, if you will. And I almost hate to use the word level because. The, the features of the game strictly say there's no leveling but I use it because in a sense there is but anyway uh, here as you can see the XP and how much I need to get to the next level or to the next rank let me stop saying level but 
to get to the next rink. And uh, my reward, I think, uh, mobility trainer authorization, I think that's what I will get when I hit the next level. So, right, the next rank, the waiting. Uh, this is my reward for hitting that next level, which will be uh, Dragon Rank 2. And you'll see the star underneath that when I hit that rank. Gear management, this is uh, the build that I have, which is something that you will really want to take advantage of. Um, and we'll talk about that in more detail um, probably in the next video, depending on how I go here. But the gear management window basically the setup I have now which is down here in my ability bar all these uh, weapon abilities down here I can create a new one and save this setup now not only will I be saving that setup but I also will be saving the setup as far as what I have and listed here on my talismans whatever I have equipped whatever weapon I have equipped weapons I have equipped all that will be saved under the gear management uh, one of these gear management slots and I can name it whatever I want to name it and then I can switch to it but you can't switch to it on the fly so if you're in combat you can't switch during combat but when you're out of combat you can switch so that's very handy you know if you if you want to try different play styles let's say you were uh, you, you 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 know built up a lot of ability points leveled up with quite a few weapons and you you know want to try want to have different play styles so in one build you can be geared to tank and in the other build you could be geared to DPS and let's say you know you get into a group and they need a DPSer but you're spec as a tank at the present moment you can go right into your gear management and click uh, whatever one is for tank and load it up and it saves you a ton of time from having to switch all your abilities around because you've already done it and you saved it so that's pretty much what the gear management window does and really um, it's very similar to what came uh, or what one of the mechanics they have in the game which is uh, let's press the letter N we call decks and um, each secret society has a deck and I kinda touched on this in one of the other uh, tutorials but uh, as you can see there's different outfits for all these ones but the main focus here is the abilities down here and the weapons thing is if you unlock all of these weapons and abilities then you unlock this deck and you get this gear to wear as a reward for unlocking all the abilities of this deck and the thing is it works similar very similarly similarly to the gear window because you can equip this deck which is down here it's kinda grayed out you can't really see but there's a claim reward button and then there's an equip deck button you clip you click the equip deck and it will equip that um, all these abilities and then you you know again you don't have to worry about switching each one to uh, uh, fill uh, out each one of these one by one instead you click equip deck and it equips all that for you very very great so aside from that and I'll get into talking about the will and, and uh, later but for now I want to kind of just go into some gameplay show you the mission structures and get you a little bit used to how this is all set up. The dressing room, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Whatever gear you buy, whatever gear you unlock, um, as far as your clothing uh, goes, it's all in here. You can equip different things. I only have one outfit right now because I just started this character, but in my other two characters, you've probably seen me switch a few outfits around, and uh, that's where you do it. So let's get out of this window here. As you can see, I have the uh, assault rifle and the blade. I don't have any blade abilities, though. Although, let's see if I have any ability points to spend, and I do, um, I can use it, but I don't find it beneficial to have just one ability in the blade. But, I, you know, for the sake of the examples, I will equip it and uh, show you how you can switch between. Uh, the good thing about it is you can mix and match uh, weapons, so in this particular setup, I can I can use my assault rifle as well as the blade as you can see but as you move late uh, move on and you know build up your weapons and s level up and skill up in your weapons you can you know set it up however you want if you want to have one gear slot uh, or one setup just for the assault rifle you can do that but if you again if you want to mix in uh, have a little combo type thing going on you can do that as well um, so let's get started as you can see this is a quest giver right here he has two three icons the red one is pretty much if you want to talk to him ask him questions about himself uh, questions about 
some of the story related stuff I'm not going to spoil anything for you especially if you're trying to come into the game come and play this game I don't want to spoil anything but right next to him you see another icon here that says Zen and the art of weapon maintenance that's a side quest um, so I'm going to show you the different dynamics between the two um, and I can pretty much give you a, a preface it uh, basically by saying the brown ones here are main main missions and I'm going to bring your attention to the right side of the screen for a second and as you can see there's different colors here uh, the top one here which is the blue is your story missions and you know it's only one uh, so you don't have to worry much about that that will be there the second one here dungeon missions so every dungeon you pick up you can only have one active at a time um, but they will populate here and you can switch between them so let's say you want to you know do the story mission and then go to the dungeon but you want to pick them all up right now you can do that and then you know s switch between the switch between them uh, whenever you're ready to do whichever one um, here is the main mission which is what you see here I'm gonna click this in a minute and we'll watch the cinematic and then it will populate this area here and we'll go ahead and do that these three here are all side missions so you can have three side missions at a time if you pick up a fourth side mission, it will ask you to replace one of these that are already over here. So, without further ado, let's jump in and uh, get this quest from this gentleman here, and we're gonna move on and walk through some of the uh, missions, or one of this this mission here. Back in my old life, I always wondered what was around the corner I didn't take down the road I didn't go. That's how I ended up here. Up to my elbows in machine grease rigging bombs. <laughs> Relax, my friend. I got plenty of experience blowing shit up. I got a handle on death and the instruments thereof. And no desire to see the infinite darkness claim any of us quite yet. These mechanical servants of the Reaper will stay still and silent till I'm good and ready to push that button. Traveling the big countries taught me everything from bull riding to bonsai. Enough to cause a man to lose his appetite for destruction. But circumstances require us to yield to the greater good. Even when that greater good isn't all that pretty. Road here said I'd be pitching in with soft shell lobster season. Instead, I found nightmare country. Maybe the very rotten heartland of it. But I'm philosophizing. Life is sacred. Every moment is precious. Brings us right back around to blowing up dead guys. I've got no shortage of time or ideas. What I'm lacking is the nuts and bolts of it. I could fill a shopping cart down Main Street. But getting out there and back, that's what's kicking my ass, my friend. So as you can see, we just have to uh, uh, pick up some stuff for this guy. I'm going to get rid of my interface here, well, the inventory. So as you can see, the icon changes under here, or right here, which says I'm currently on this mission. And up in the right over here, you can see it's populated on the right side of my screen. So, thing is, I can pick up this side quest as well. It's no cinematic for this one, but it does fill uh, my, the right side of my screen here. So I'm going to click this and go back to this mission. As you can see, part of this mission is to pick this up. So I'm going to do this, this side mission, I mean, so I'm going to pick this up real fast. And basically, this is a small tutorial on how to uh, craft. And I did a video on this, so I'm not going to dig too far into this. But actually, I'm going to finish the quest because it's given me uh, a tutorial here to do it. So I have the shotgun. We're going to run through it, grab the weapon kit. Uh, let's see, it's one in here. Let's grab that. It says, disassemble the broken shotgun. So let's do that. Bingo. We got pieces here. Follow the instructions in the book to assemble a new weapon. And what I'm going to do is assemble a shotgun. And again, I have a video on this, so I'm going to run through this without explanation. And just uh, kind of get it done here. to delete it. 
to make sure I still remember how to make one of these things. No, that's not it. Okay. Bingo. Right, so we get a shotgun. For which, by the way, I do have uh, some abilities for. So I'm going to actually equip that. Replace my blade uh, with the shotgun. There we go. And let's see here. Did I pick up any shotgun abilities? I did. Okay, so let's actually replace the blade ability with the shotgun. And I think that's the only one I got. Right, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and use that instead. Okay. So, like that, I finished up that side quest, and as you can see on the top right, or well, on the right side here, I can send in the report and collect my reward. And I don't have to be next to this guy to do that, so you can be anywhere on the map and complete these missions, which is great. That means you don't have to run all the way back to the quest giver to complete them. Very welcome, in my opinion. I don't mind that at all. That's very convenient. So, let's get back to uh, my main mission here. And I have to check Moose's shopping list. So, actually, let's get back over there because the shopping list is over here. And where is that list at? Right here. Okay, and normally quest items that you have to click will be highlighted with a fine yellow outline. So you got to be a little attentive. It's no longer highlighted, but if you looking at the other quest you've probably seen that gun highlighted in yellow that's pretty much uh, the way it's set up so gotta pretty much be attentive to the surroundings in the game here's an example right here this is not a mission item for this quest but it's a phone book which is used in another mission so without further ado I'm gonna go ahead and complete this mission so let's go These zombies are a part of addition diff or that guy's quest, so that's his problem, not mine. I normally am a good Samaritan though, and I will help every now and again. But uh for the most part, I let people have fun playing their own missions and I don't butt in. So I have to go to this gas station. I'm here and now I have to get a propel uh propane tank. And as you can see, again they highlight in yellow, so it kinda helps you out a little bit, but you get again you do have to be attentive. I have that now I have to go over there and as you can see it tells you where you need to go some if, the great thing is it's a uh, very uh, very helpful but there's some missions in particular uh, some of the uh, investigation missions which I haven't shown you yet but there are some in there and on here in the game which are very fun by the way but they really require you to use your head and um, the answer is not readily available right up front. You really have to dig it, dig a little deeper to figure out some of the answers. And I think that's great. I really think that's great. I love that a lot because there's enough games on the market right now that are brainless. <laughs> and uh, though these missions that you can get in this game, I, I find it very refreshing. It really requires you to think and use your head. But let's get to this... Uh, Kindergarten or Kingsmouth Municipal Park and pick up whatever else was on that list, which happened to be ball bearings. And again, as you can see, this highlights, which lets me know this ball bearings are on that little bike. So now we have to go to Wendy's, or Jack and Wendy's bed and breakfast. Let's get out there. get out there. Yep, got some attention. I think I'll just outrun them though. For the sake of time. Oh, a little freezing there. And almost there. We are here. Collect the kitty litter. Will do. Now go to the derelict trailer. Will do. And it's going to be crowded with enemies. Ah, uh, actually, no, it's not. And 
Boy, am I grateful. For my level, it will be challenging. So let's get out of here. So let's go to the fire department, which is what's next. I'm going to skip now to kind of cut out the running, and I'll come back in when we get to the fire station. And so we're here. And uh, obviously I'm about to go in, but I have to fight this guy. Now, just for the sake of uh, example, uh, let me show you that this uh, how to gauge <laughs> if an enemy is a good idea to attack, or if it's a good idea to attack a certain enemy. This enemy has a yellow ball next to his name, and he has red letters over his name. Um, I don't really want to go into too much detail, but there are a few websites and um, even the f uh, forums for the game that will you, you can go and kind of find out in more detail what everything means. But the thing that probably is most important is the icon next to the enemy's name. In this case, it's a yellow ball. And for that yellow ball, it basically lets you know that the enemy is one level above you. Um, and if it was white, it would mean that he is on par with your skill level or your quality level um, of your character. Um, if it's red, you want to kind of go the other direction. Okay. Uh, the name, the color of the name, I, um, I, I actually have to look that up again, but it does have a meaning, but it's not really relevant as far as the difficulty of the enemy. Um, one thing I do know is if it was orange, that means he is a quest enemy. So somebody that you most likely have to kill in your quest. But for this one, he's red, basically an enemy on the, on the, uh, in the in the world that you just have to that you just you know want to kill but other than that no real significance so I'm gonna go ahead and attack this guy and go and finish this quest and um, again this video is just to give you an idea of how everything uh, works um, hopefully I'll have more videos uh, to show you but I'm gonna ah good somebody attacked him for me but I'm gonna um, go into more uh, as I see fit uh, coming across anything that may be of uh, benefit to show okay so without further ado I will finish this quest Another thing I do want to point out is a combat mechanic. I think I might die here, but let's see if I can mitigate some of this health loss by using one of my healing abilities when I can. I probably can win this fight. Definitely want to be there for that. As you can see, that area, of that cone would, would have meant I'd have been in the middle of that attack. But anyway. Um, if you were watching, which I wanted to kind of explain while I was fighting, so I'll probably pick a fight with another guy here. But um, there's what's called builder abilities and finisher abilities, and I'll explain that when I fight this next enemy. Right here. Okay, so if you look under his uh, health bar, there's these things that are building up. Now it's five of them, so I've built this up, and now if I use my finisher ability, it will be more powerful because I let it build up to five. If I use the finisher ability when it's at one or two like it is now, then it won't be as powerful as it would be if I would wait until it uh, I build it up to five. So it's basically builder finisher moves. And so as you can see it's building up with every time I use this builder attack, which is the first one. Now 
I hit the uh, my finisher attack and it took a lot of health from this guy so it's just one mechanic that you definitely want to get familiar with because it can save you in a lot of fights and uh, and then the thing is, is, is it goes deeper than that because a lot of these abilities uh, piggyback or work well with each other but you have to find out the best um, combos to use um, and again there's so many there's quite a few weapons and uh, some weapons complement each other better than others so it's just good if you you know kinda do the research and figure out which ones those are so I'm gonna get out of dodge here and now to finish up the rest of this quest but I did get that uh, ice pack or cold pack now as you level up or <laughs> I keep using the word level up but as you uh, move up in the uh, world <laughs> you will uh, be able to get or, or I guess run faster I should say there's some a bit so first of all as you rank up in the society there's uh, that's actually how you do it actually it, it unlocks there's some rewards that you get and that's one of them to be able to run faster so don't think you have to run this slow throughout the whole game because you won't so let's grab these cartons of orange juice and let's get back and give this guy his ingredients <laughs> you better say thank you It wasn't easy work. So that's just a you know very brief basic uh, run of uh, how these missions work. But we're gonna drop it in the box here. And bingo! Just like the side quest did, it, get, it allows me to send the report in and get my rewards. You automatically get these. Uh, I don't know how you say that, but anyway, these coins and uh, packs for mana. Uh, for every mission that you complete depending on where you are what zone you're in um, and then you can choose one of these and for me this character I, I'm just a DPS guy so I'm gonna actually go for a DPS talisman here and let's see if there we go that's the one I'm gonna collect it and I'm going to equip it well actually I can't because I don't have Right, right, actually this is good timing to uh, show you this, but this talisman has uh, a red uh, cross uh, or cross out on the uh, top left corner of it, which lets me know I cannot use it, and if you highlight over it, of course, like I am now, you can see that it says requires minor talisman skill 1. Let me show you where that is. And let's get that. So this is your skill screen, okay? And, right, this takes me right to the next uh, phase that I wanted to go to. Um, this is very important because this is how you level up, <laughs> I keep saying that, but how you yes, essentially level up your abilities as it relates to the weapons and your uh, talismans. Now, it's important that you, that you pay attention to that because, you know, first of all, if you want to equip better weapons you have to have the skill level to do so but one thing that you will want to know for example my assault rifle here I have skill level one but that doesn't mean I can only use skill level one assault rifles it, every whatever skill level you have you can use one skill level above that level so I can in effect equip skill level two assault rifles but for me, what I want to do uh, now is build up my minor talisman so I can equip that. And I only had one point to spend, so that's the point I chose to spend. And with my shotgun, I'm going to pick my next ability here. And this here. Oh, well, actually, I can't only have one. So let me jump over to this side and grab that. Okay, and just for the sake of example, and uh, yes, which brings me to this screen. So, first of all, you'll notice in the bottom right corner here, these icons. When you have gain points, whether it be skill points or ability points, you're going to see that in the bottom right corner here. It's the blue one is going to say SK, and the yellow one will say a uh, AP. A <laughs> SK. 
SP, I'm sorry. So SP for skill points, AP for ability points. And you can just click that and it'll take you right to the um to this screen here when it comes to AP, which is your ability points, which is how you spend them. And you already saw me uh, buy a few, but basically these are the inner ring of the shotgun uh, abilities. And so rifle over here, pistols here, blades, and so on and so on. Once I fill both of these inner rings, as you can see, these this is the inner ring that's highlighted right here. If I get once I get all these abilities, I fill out this whole ring here. But then once I fill both of these rings, then I'll be able to buy the outer ring ability points. And these essentially are stronger powers or abilities that you can use with the with said weapon. So um, again though the, the uh, red in this case the red abilities are the actual an actual uh, active ability so ability that you have to toggle basically or click or activate the purple ones are passives which you can see right down here these are all my equipped passive abilities that means these are always on these are always working if you're familiar with MMOs you understand that concept um, and then again this side on the left hand side here the actives these are the ones that I have to toggle and click in order to activate so um, the thing is they do complement and the good news is uh, most of these passives for each for every last one of these weapons work for all the other weapons there's some that don't and there's some that work specifically for the weapon that you picked it from if you will but for most for the most case most of them work for all weapons okay let me see if I can show an example for example, yeah, this one, extra bullet, passive ability, safety off, performs an additional hit. That means this passive ability not only works for my for uh, my assault rifle, which is where I picked it up from, right here, extra bullet, but it also works for my shotgun. So that's just one example, but there's some abilities that only work for the weapon uh, or the the circle or the inner circle that you picked it out from so um, again just basic stuff you, you can get deeper into it uh, you play around with this and just kinda do a little research and find out how everything here works but it's a uh, very very um intriguing to me and I like it I think it's uh, it's definitely different than what I'm used to when it comes to MMOs and I like it it's a, it's a nice change of pace and uh, it took some getting used to when I first started and uh, Thanks to some people who were willing to help answer questions in this uh, chat. And then some research of my own to kind of figure it all out. But since I learned it, I wanted to kind of give a tutorial here to kind of show you guys how that all works. Hopefully I didn't talk your ear off because this one was a lot of talking, I know. And uh, But again, I just wanted to really do a tutorial on it. Um, so with that said, I think I have talked your ear enough for one session. And I will... Um, Come back with more tutorials as uh, I, th I see that feel that they are needed, or if you guys have any requests, please feel free to throw them in the uh, comments or send me an email. Feel free. And uh, by the way, as you can see, this talisman I can now equip, so I will do just that. And uh, bingo, I'm all set to go. So without further ado, I'm all finished here. Again, any questions, please uh, send them to me, and I'll be happy to answer as best I can or find the answer for you. Um, again, if you like these videos, please do subscribe or hit the like button. Um, outside of that, I will see you soon and uh, hope you enjoyed.